Hi, and welcome to the Ant Micro booth. We're here at the Meta World 2020, and I'm Michael Gilda, VP Business Development at Ant Micro. I'm going to show you around the demos here. Uh, there's quite a few of them. Uh, this is what we call the video wall, uh, which covers quite a bit of the AI related technology we work with. Uh, there's some FPGA and uh, GPU based ore tracking for mining purposes. Uh, there's some devices we build for customers in the medical industry. There's a multi camera solution here uh, running, as you can see, this little end micro logo spinning, spinning middle. Uh, there's some other hardware kits that we've built, but most of our actual activity is around software that you can what put What do you do those. with those cameras? So those cameras is just a six camera solution, right? Uh, on our custom camera modules. Uh, you can build different kinds of multi-camera things like uh, 360 degree vision kits or uh, yeah, tracking solutions to stereo vision. This is an Allied Vision camera. Allied Vision is a partner of ours. We build all the embedded uh, drivers for them for Linux-based devices like the NVIDIA uh, Jetson Xavier or the Amix 6, Amix 8. Which part of this is uh, at micro? Uh, so actually it's uh, some of those boards behind this module, but also the software running inside of this, right? Again, we're a software company. Uh, so I would say that the most important thing to carry out of this is, sure, we do a lot of hardware, but in reality what we do is we put advanced computer vision AI software on top of those boards. What's the, the, the name? Ant Micro, what's, what's, it, what's it mean? It, it is what it is. It's and <laughs> yeah, it's you know it originates from us originally being a small company that works with micro technology. That's all. <laughs> and uh, and here is a uh, ultra scale plus stuff with the uh, Xilinx. Yes, correct. That's an ultra scale plus FPGA system on chip uh, on a module. And uh, some more Nvidia. So this is our open source uh, hardware board. It's the Jetson Nano Carrier Board. That's what we originally called it, except that it's also compatible with the Jetson Xavier X. Uh, this exposes PCI Express, uh, so you can connect different kinds of PCI peripherals to it. This here is a, a four times ethernet hub uh, switch that you can connect into the Nano, getting this uh, multi ethernet solution in a very small form factor. And uh, here you talk about some uh, RISC-V. You've been doing a bunch of stuff with RISC-V, right? Yeah, RISC-V is one of our key focuses for the future. Uh, there's uh, quite a lot of research and actual customer projects we're doing today. Uh, this module we're looking at here is um, a RISC-V SOM we built uh, some years ago for one of the RISC-V summits. And then that module is actually plugged into this uh, badge that we built for, I think, the risk five workshop in 2017, where uh, we gave those away to speakers and uh, 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 press. Uh, a lot of people actually use those until today. We also inspired quite a bunch of different kinds of uh, badges across many co conferences. So what do you do in the risk 5 ecosystem? Uh, do you work on the chip or the software for the chip? Or, or who's doing the chip? Is it with Sci-5? So th there's a few chips here, right? This one here is actually Sci-5's, but uh, the one we built in here is, as you can see, if you zoom it up, this is an Ant Micro chip. We call it the Gem 1, uh, since it's the first in the series. Uh, this is a system and package built up from several components. And what we're doing here is uh, doing a machine learning algorithm detecting the brightness of the light uh, approaching the sensor. So it blinks a LED when we have a lot of light and then if you uh, uh, cover the light, there is no blinking anymore. Uh, this includes the RISC-V inside. Actually, we have a second version of that chip with a hard RISC-V core. We have it opened here so that you can see inside. Uh, the package contains several elements interconnected by a flexible uh, yeah, interconnect, basically. And this all runs Zephyr. Uh, it has the capability to interface, you know, MIPI cameras via custom MIPI IP. And uh, you can also simulate that in Renode, which is our open source simulation framework uh, that we use for different kinds of embedded systems development, but also for hardware software code development, for testing of uh, AGI systems like the TensorFlow Lite. Uh, there's a dedicated pod for Renode-related stuff in here. Uh, hey, 
Uh, I think the most interesting thing here is a board that we just announced with QuickLogic. QuickLogic is an FPGA vendor. The EOS S3 is an FPGA SOC, which uh, we created and delivered an entire open source hardware and software ecosystem for. So this board is open hardware, it's on GitHub, and on the board you can run Zephyr, which we also ported to it and released as open source. Uh, and this is also supported in Renode. There's some open source IP, there's some tutorials, and uh, overall it's an entire ecosystem that we've been building for QuickLogic to enable people to quickly start working with the EOS S3. This is actually an ARM chip. This is a, a Cortex-M4 with a flexible FPG logic inside. So, uh, what's the big use for Renode? The biggest use for Renode is actually testing and development of software. If you want to build a complicated system with lots of software in it, especially when protocols are involved, if you're connecting multiple devices together, you can take the software you'd normally run on an embedded device, but instead of running it on hardware, you'd run it in Renode without modification. And by doing so, you abstract out the hardware problems that you normally face. Uh, you work with the software in a uh, pure you know, computer uh, infrastructure, so you can do continuous integration, repeated testing, you have reproducibility, you have uh, traceability. You can look at how the software is interacting with the virtual hardware to learn more about uh, uh, why your software isn't working. With real hardware, sometimes you put the software in, it just doesn't work. With a simulated uh, platform like Renode, you can actually see what's going on, and that's why TensorFlow Lite uh, is using us for uh, prototyping development and CI. What are we looking at here on the screen? Uh, here we have a system of three interconnected nodes. Uh, they're connected over UARTs and uh, they're just talking to each other in an automated routine. This is real Renode running on this screen and it's just all automated. And of course you can imagine much more complicated setups, except of course this little device, this is a low power device, uh, it doesn't have any super powerful IOs. Uh, but we also, in Renode, we can also simulate platforms like the Polar Fire SOC, for example, from Microchip, uh, which includes things like PCI Express and CAN and USB, which allows you to build pretty powerful and complicated setups with multi-core Linux, uh, FPGA code simulation, and so on. That's another um, RISC-V stuff? Uh, yeah, Polar Fire SOC is a RISC-V FPGA SOC from Microchip. So. Um, this Renode, is it revolutionary? Is it a new kind of way of doing things? Or is it similar to a lot of stuff that's been done before? Oh, we like to think so. it's revolutionary in the sense that it gives you an ability to innovate in terms of methodology of development of embedded systems. So very often people don't really test their devices extensively. The problem is that the more complicated your software stack gets and the more hardware is involved, you will just effectively stop being able to physically run through the same test routines over and over and over again. With Renode, you can connect virtual sensors, press buttons, see virtual LEDs blinking. Uh, you can even have uh, you know, graphical outputs if you wanted. And all of that is in a virtualized environment that is reproducible uh, and traceable. So this lends itself very well to CI. Normally, if you want to test hardware and continuous integration, you would uh, have to put you know, a board or a bunch of boards into a box and hide them in a server room. And of course, the question is, if you want to press a button, how do you do that, right? So in a simulated system, you can just effectively simulate that you're pressing the button and see what happens. Uh, this actually kind of uh, ties very well into the continuous integration and cloud and over the year updates aspect of our work. What you can see here is an open source uh, Android BSP that we built and released to GitHub. And this BSP, uh, you know, the way we work with those things is um, it's a lot of repositories, it's hard to manage. So when we work with our customers, we give them reproducible and traceable pipelines uh, and code uh, accessible to them in the cloud, in the cloud system that uh, is put together in a cloud pipeline and then out of this you get a reproducible BSP build that you put on a board like this and you can trace back whatever the software, wherever it's coming from and how it really works. It, it's a nice platform for collaborating with the customers and for making sure that what you think you're running is the same as you, what you're actually running. So uh, Ant Micro, uh, how big is the company? Where is it based? Where are people based? So in, most in of micro. us are in Poland. There's over 50 of us, uh, but we act worldwide. Our customers are mostly from the US and EU. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, cases in you know, Australia, on Singapore, 
But yeah, the majority of our work actually happens in the United States and uh, yeah, among different European countries. Over there, there's uh, more FPGA going on here. Is this, we cover this or not? I don't think we one. have. Uh, this is uh, an FPGA platform. It's an open hardware board again. As you can see, we're very fond of open hardware. Um, this includes some CSI IP, which allows us to interface uh, cameras. And at this spot, we're showcasing the methodology of development that we use for FPGA. So we work a lot with uh, RISC-V based open source uh, soft system on chips. And there's one in here. There's also Zephyr, uh, the real-time operating system uh, running on this platform and it's kind of interfacing the camera into the rest of the system running a shell uh, and we're talking about uh, you know vendor neutral development methodology uh, we work with all of those vendors and we like them very much but we think that ultimately FPGAs are a grossly underestimated platform that could be so much more popular if only the methodology was more software driven and that's what we're aiming for we're building blocks and tools and IPs to enable a much more software-oriented FPGA development methodology than before. So you're working on stuff that's ARM-based, you're working on FPGA stuff, Intel, x86, I saw an Intel over there, yeah. right? And, uh, and RISC-V, are you yes. all over the place? Yes, I would say that most of our current work is of ARM. The much of the future generation stuff is RISC-V. The x86 is not really a lot of what we do, but of course it is you know, part Connect of the ecosystem. To it. Yeah, you connect to it, right? Yes. Uh, so, uh, what would you say is the status of the Risk Five stuff? And it seems your company is very uh, enthusiastic about it, and you and doing a bunch of stuff about it, yeah. right? There's a saying where uh, people grossly overestimate what can be done in five years and grossly underestimate what will happen in ten years. So I think that's what's happening to Risk Five. I, five years have passed since we joined that ecosystem because we joined in 2015 and I think there's been a lot of progress but of course some people anticipated things would happen sooner. Uh, in reality I think all this groundwork, all the stuff that we did you know in terms of uh, software support, simulation, operating systems, uh, all the building blocks are there and in the next five years RISC-V is really going to make a fundamental difference to how we perceive uh, edge AI systems. And why is that? Well, because it gives an open capability of collaborating between people. Like you can see the Risk Five Foundation being, I think it encompasses around 300 companies today. So this multitude of voices is giving us an extreme ability to innovate where people just bump into each other and work together to build great things like the Gem One I was showing here, uh, this uh, video solution there. You know, all of these things are in some shape or form a collaboration between different parties and different open source frameworks, different pieces of software and hardware. Uh, this is very easy to do in an open ISA that is risk five. But there's also a lot of open source possible and happening around the ARM, right? Sure, no, absolutely. So ARM is still, of course, and it's not going away. Uh, what is really happening is that new markets are being built, new uh, capabilities are un uncovered. And I think that's really RISC-V's role, is, is building those new things. It's not necessarily pushing out existing solutions or you know, killing existing players. It's rather enabling new innovation in fields where it wasn't possible before. And uh, I see the Zephyr up there. So what do you work, what do you do with the Zephyr? Uh, so throughout some of those demos, you might have heard me say Zephyr quite a few times. We use it as a default RTOS for all the things we do. So of course, in bigger devices, we'd use Linux. So many of those AI demos will be running Linux. But if we go to a smaller device where Linux is not necessary and actually might be an overkill, that's where Zephyr comes in, as, as we call it, you know, Linux's little brother. And it's fun to work with Zephyr? Of course. Yeah, it's a great system. Yeah. It's a great community. So. Um, it seems that at NMicro, you're very excited about open source. Yes. <laughs> Only open source. Everything is open source. I mean, of course, a lot of the things we deliver to customers ultimately is some kind of a closed product that they sell. Uh, so it's not all open source all the time, but all the building blocks we use, all the fundamental technologies that we apply are open source. And we contribute a lot to open source. And we think the workflows that need to happen for work to go forward just need to be open source. So yeah, it's almost, you know, almost all open source. But I wouldn't want to say, you know, we can't work with proprietary technology. It's just that they have a place as the finer layer, you know, the, the sugar on top that you might need to make a business case. But for the majority of the infrastructural things, open source is the best way to innovate.
And you, you say Poland? Uh, where is it in Poland? Poznan. Poznan. Is it the, the most talented open source engineers in whole Poland? In the company? I mean, that's, that's where we opened the company, right? That's where we based. So uh, I can't comment on whether it's you know most talented, but definitely we you know enjoyed there and <laughs> it's given us a lot of great growth and opportunity. And every year, I like this embedded world, it's a bit strange one, but uh, every year there's a lot of growth in this embedded world like in the industry of embedded a lot of new things happening mm -hmm. exciting things yeah i mean you know uh <laughs> this year's pretty special of course yeah. but uh, ultimately if you look at the landscape yes we're going forward yes there's a lot of new innovations i mean both for and micro but uh, for people in general there's quite a lot of excitement so uh happy to be here i think it's our seventh year as exhibitor 